I thought it would be a good idea to do a series of videos on the language design of Gram, why certain features were added or removed or changed. And today, I thought we could start with tuples, uh, or more specifically, why tuples were removed from the language. Um, as you may know, Gram started its life as a fork of Elm, and Elm has tuples while Gram doesn't. Why is that? Let's start by doing a short recap. Uh, tuples are a position-based, non-homogeneous data structure. They are a data structure where uh, the order of elements is important and where each element can be of a different type. Uh, tuples are limited in size. They can either be zero or you know empty. You can have an empty tuple or you can have a two tuple, also known as a pair or a three tuple or a triplet. Uh, but you can't have tuples of four, five, six, or any larger number of elements. Uh, tuples are actually very similar to records, except in records you access things by name, you reference the elements by name, and in tuples you reference them by their position in the data structure. But other than that, they are identical. They are compiled down to the exact same thing. So. Having or not having tuples doesn't enable more or less memory use or better performance. They are purely a way to express yourself in code. But even with the limitation that tuples have, which is you know the number of elements, um, they do have their uses and they do have their disuses or you know the, depending on the use, tuples can be an anti-pattern. And I'll get to that. But first, let's just talk over how you could use tuples. Um, so obviously, you can use tuples as a simple data structure. So here I have a person, uh, which is represented as a tuple, a pair uh, containing a string, and an integer. Uh, and the benefit of doing this is that I don't have to name things. But that, you know, so it's, it's very quick to do. I don't have to think about the name for the first or second thing. Um, but therein lies the downside of a tuple, right? Because the order of elements in a tuple is important. And that means that changing the order is a breaking change, right? If I change the order of elements, my program suddenly will, will stop to compile. And that's the best case. In the worst case, Changing the order doesn't break my program because it's the same types, but I still have a program that probably doesn't work anymore. Uh, and of course, if I were to realize that in addition to these two things that I have in my two tuple, I would like a third thing. And so I want to add something to tuple, creating a three tuple that is also breaking change. Um, and similarly, by going from three tuple to two tuple, that's also a breaking change. So tuples are very brittle. It's very easy to make a change to your code that breaks everything that references a tuple. Uh, and on top of that, the compiler can't really help you a lot except to tell you if the types match or not. It can't help you knowing, like if you have a, if you have a pair of strings, the compiler can't help you figure out which string represents what, uh, which would be different if you had names as records do. And of course, tuples are limited in size, which means that if you figure out that, you know, I have a, a three tuple of things here, but I would love to have like a fourth element, you can't do that uh, in Elm. So you would have to convert to a record, which means that, you know, tuples was probably the wrong thing to use, uh, but also it, it breaks everything that references that type of tuple. So as a data structure, it's, you know, it offers convenience. You don't have to name things, but it comes at, uh, it comes at the cost of brittleness. It makes it more likely for your code to break if you were to refactor code in the future. Um, you can also use tuples to compare multiple things. So here we have a case expression where we generate or we create a, uh, a tuple uh, in order to pattern match, in order to do like a nested pattern match 
of it. Uh, as a way of simulating that we're comparing multiple things when in reality we are, of course, just pattern matching on a single, simple data structure. Uh, and this is useful, and I, you know, you can find this in the, uh, you can find this uh, in the core libraries of Gren. Uh, so this is like this is a very valid use case. Uh, but in fact, you might ask yourself if this is really something that we need tuples for, or if this should just be baked right into the case expression. Um, but it's a valid use case. Uh, you can also use tuples in order to simulate multiple return values, either for functions or, as in this case, from expressions. Uh, so you can define two values at once using a single case expression, essentially performing that case expression once uh, instead of twice, which, would, would you, which you would necessarily have to do without using a data structure of some kind. Now in the case, like if this is defined within a let expression, uh, this is fine, uh, but if you were to return a tuple from a function, essentially simulating a function that returns multiple values, you now have a tuple as part of your API, and that has the same downsides as using a tuple as a data structure, right? It's brittle. It makes it more likely that you will have to refactor everything that represents that function, that data structure, in the future. Um, tuples is the only data literal in ELM that has a size limitation. If you were to create arrays, you can have as many elements as you want. Uh, there's, you know, there's, there, there is a limit, but you are unlikely to reach that limit in real world code. Uh, the same thing applies to records, right? You can have as many properties in record as you want. Tuples is the only data literal that forbids you from defining a tuple of a certain size. And the reason for that is because you don't have names associated with elements, at some point, uh, using tuples as a data structure or as a way of doing like a huge case comparison is just unwieldy. Uh, and so as a, as a way to like nudge you to, like if you want a four tuple or a five tuple or a six tuple, you probably don't want a tuple. And so Elm kind of like gently reminds you that you're crossing a threshold here that you probably, you, your future self would not want you to cross this threshold. Uh, and one could argue that if you have an artificial limitation on the size of tuples or the size of anything, that that thing might not be a good feature to begin with. So tuples can be good, they're not necessarily bad, but I think they mostly shine when you keep them out of your API, when you know your use of tuples is limited to a local scope, where you can keep in your head what each element is, and where you can very easily refactor it if you were to change your mind, right? The problem with tuples is that they're so convenient, right? You don't have to name things and the syntax is very short. It's very, very easy to reach for a tuple. They're seductive in a way. And so they're, you know, it's just very easy to just use a tuple without really thinking about it too carefully. Now, records, on the other hand, are easier to change without breaking the program. Like I can add things to a record and it, you know it will probably break something in my program but it won't break everything right you can do case expressions like you can do pattern matching on records and it won't break if you were to add something to the record or, or later on um, uh, it's also easier to remember what each field of the record is about because it has a name that hints at what it is uh, and you know, if you don't, if you don't want to figure out a name, you can always use index-like names when prototyping, or when just trying to figure stuff out. You can just use short, silly names based on an index. Right? You can always work yourself around records being a, or figuring out names being a little inconvenient. 
And, you know, when it comes to tuples, when it came to removing tuples, we're, we're, we have to consider the fact that we kind of want to follow the design dishes and design decisions of Elm, where if something is very easy to mess up, then we should seriously consider not having that feature to begin with, right? It should be hard to do things you'd end up regretting later, and, and preferably it shouldn't be possible to do such things. Elm doesn't have the mutation because mutation is a source of a lot of issues. And that's fine. And I've kind of landed on tuples. They're not really necessary for what you're about for you know writing programs. And you can make a mess of things very easily with them. Um, and so maybe it just shouldn't. To put it another way, every time I've used the tuple as part of my API, I've, I've regretted the choice. I've always had to do a refactoring on a stage where I thought, why on earth did I use tuples? And so I've just come down to the fact that unless I'm using tuples within the local scope of the function, I just want to use records. But I've also figured out that even in those cases, using records is fine. So Gren doesn't have tuples. It does, however, have improved pattern matching on records. And that's kind of like the trade-off we had to make. Like pattern matching on records in Elm leaves a little bit to be desired. Uh, but when you remove tuples and have to use records, then you really need pattern matching to, on records to be better. So in Elm, you can do simple deconstruction on records. So this is a valid Elm thing like where you have a function and you immediately destructure record uh, extracting prop one, prop two, prop three, for example. Uh, this works. But what doesn't work is aliasing those properties. So if you already have, like if you want to call prop one something else within the scope of this function, you can't do that. Uh, in Gren you can. So here you can do, here is, you know, I'm saying that prop one is another record where I want to rename, or I want to extract name and age as person name and person age, as opposed to name and age. And then of course I can do, and then I can alias that sub record as person, so I have access to it, should I need to. Which is, you know, you know, I can do nested deconstruction, I can do renames. And of course, within a case expression, I could do like where name is Robin, uh, give me the age, or something, right? Uh, yeah, the, here's an example of that. So here's a case expression where I create an inline record where I say that a world record, the world record property is result of running the get with new world record as the key and where today's best uh, is the value returned by dick get today's best. Uh, and in the pattern matching, in the first case here, I am saying that I, you know, it should match if the world record property is just something. Uh, and you will note that um, you don't have to say that today's best is underscore or something. That's just implied when you leave it out of the pattern matching. Uh, and then if that, you know, if world record isn't just something, then we move on to the next pattern match where we check if today's best is something. Uh, now, in this case, you know, we would have to have like a catch-all pattern uh, because this isn't exhaustive. Uh, but you get the idea. Uh, pattern matching in Gran is, is more powerful. And that is, it's kind of like a consequence of tuples being removed that we needed better properties for this. So to summarize, um, you know, records can be used everywhere tuples can, and it has the same runtime characteristics. Uh, they're the only negative to records is that you have to figure out names for the properties, but the benefit of that is that you can change a record more easily and avoid breaking your program. Uh, you're less reliant on the actual structure, more reliant on the names for each field. Uh, and because of that, records is, in many situations, the better option. Uh, and finally, you know, tuples are really necessary. Uh, 
you can very easily write code without tuples. And considering the fact that they make your programs more brittle, you, we don't really need it in the language at all. And I think we're better off for it. So that was, you know, my first video on the language design of Gren. Uh, if you like this video, I would very happily accept uh, suggestions on what future language design videos could be about. Uh, just leave them in the comments below and uh, well, hopefully see you in the future.